Today's topic, Amanda Seals. Our full disclaimer, I don't like her. But I just... You don't like her? I don't. You don't like her? I don't think there's ever been an interview where I watched her for more than five minutes and, and thought... she was likable. I think I would enjoy a conversation with this human being. But she did an interview with Shannon Sharp. It went viral for a lot of different reasons. You guys sent me this interview. A lot of you guys DM'd me. And I kind of hate you for it because I watched it. I was about that. And then I edited it down so that you guys don't have to hate it as much as I will. Now it went from three hours to 22 minutes. And I promise you, you still going to hate her. I told you I was about to watch it. And you said, please don't. <laughs> no, I was about to watch it. No, don't do it. I I don't think folks realize behind the scenes how much I have to do sometimes because this shit was yeah, disgusting. He did. Well, hey, you're going to see why, okay? I'm going to just play some of these clips back to back. You know okay? what? I can't wait to see. Amanda Seals is an actress, podcaster, comedian, DJ, musician, poet. She's a lot of things, okay? And to be fair to her, her career resume is extensive from a child actor to even up until today, she's done a lot in the entertainment industry. She was part of the TV show Insecure where a lot of people know her. She was also part of Flowetry. She was part of one of her favorite daytime TV shows, The Real. If you guys are wondering what all these clips are, I'm just piecing together her conflicts with people. In a three hour interview, there might've been at least 30 <clears> or 35 <throat> different people from all walks of life, different points in her life before she was famous, after she was famous, school, <laughs> elementary school, middle school, <laughs> work, radio, didn't f it matter. Everywhere she went, motherfuckers hated her. I present to you a professional victim, Amanda Seals. I am a genius. <laughs> give, give her some time, bro. Let her cook. Let her cook, bro. It's just no, but yo, you tell me let her cook, but it's like whenever you try to cook and then you put people walk in the room and they're like, mm, he smells good. What are you cooking? It's just garlic and oil. Calm down. <laughs> it still smells fire. Okay, let's go though. Let's go. I am a genius. I'm a gifted performer. I am a gifted person. I am a creative genius. I'm generous. I am giving. <laughs> I am kind. <laughs> Bro, she 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 just she got some lovers. <laughs> she sounds like you know you you know when you're like in a job interview and you start talking about yourself too much, and you like oh shit you notice that you're starting to give yourself too much praise. You just flow in you just throw in some self deprecating things here and there. She's not even on that time. She, all she sees when she looks in the mirror is perfection. You gotta love her. I fucking love Amanda Seals. <laughs> she confident. Hey, if, if nobody. He's gonna love you, who will? I'm funny, I'm delightful. Like these are not things that um, I need to wait for somebody to say about me. I know these things about myself. It is my habit because I've always been labeled as this. You think you know everything. It's not that I think I know everything, but I really did know the answer. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm helping the room out by ha having the answer. Uh, but they like- Ugh. I think you're a know-it-all. You know what's funny about that? I've always done the opposite. Like, I've always been the person, I think it's really important. I think that's a kind of the skill in being a good friend. I think it's really important if you want to be a good friend. To, and again, this is bad coming from me because I have no friends. But bear with me a second while I be a little bit hypocritical and just talk out my ass for a second. But it's a podcast. That's what you're meant to be doing. Cool. Safe. All right. Let's go. But I think in order to be a good friend, you have to know when to shut the fuck up and let the friend have the, have the floor. So sometimes you could be with your friend and they could be talking about something that they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. They're passionate about it. They're curious about it. They want to share this thing to you, share this thing with you. And you know they're talking out their ass. You know you know the answers. But sometimes it's nice just to let your friend go off. Because why the fuck not? It's a conversation amongst friends over beer. It's not some CNN interview. You're not having, it's not a fucking interview on the New York Times. You're having a conversation with your pal. Let them have the floor. Or better yet, when you, you know, you've got the type of friends who like, just wait for you to shut up and then they can say what they want to say, but not really listening. I think another skill, even if you're that kind of person, just to pretend to listen, just let them have this, let them have the floor. Let them have the floor until they're exhausted, until they are tired of hearing themselves, then you can talk. But this idea of like always wanting to correct people, always wanting to flip in, clarify things and just always have something to say and not give somebody space to talk or, let, or not let them land, as we say in Twitter Spaces world, it's so annoying. Let, it's annoying already in a workplace. I couldn't imagine how annoying it would be if that person was your friend. You know what I mean? You're a lot. 
you're a show off, you're extra. In my first, my sophomore year of college, I was put in a suite with seven other women. And the day I got there, my name had been ripped off the door and thrown on the ground. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know these women. God damn, they hate you from the jump. <laughs> so mind you, she's not even well known right now. She's in college. Let's keep listening. And insane. two weeks in of them not talking to me, I said, listen, I'd like to have a Friday night where I buy a bottle of tequila and we all just sit around and y'all could take shots and tell me why you don't like me. And everybody's and I love I love how she recounts her stories as if she said it that calmly. I love how she's recounting it like she said it that calmly, like she didn't cuss anybody out. She just took it on the chin. Okay, these girls ripped my name off the thing. Oh no, what can you do? Hey ladies, just a second. I know you all hate me, but could I just steal two seconds of your time and just get let you guys know? You're all really beautiful women in all your ways, in all shapes and sizes, whatever you are, you're all beautiful to me. And I want to get to know you more. I want you to love me the way I love you. So I've organized some drink. Like, she didn't say it that way. You know what I mean? But she's recounting it like she's the perfect, perfect, perfect witness. It's like, come on, bro. You're not the you're not a believable narrator, man. We don't believe you, Amanda. You seem kind of easy to hate. Season was. I don't like you because you think you all laugh. I don't like you because you extra. I don't like you because you a show off. None of that shit is anything having, like I'm not harming them. Right. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm literally just trying to But exist. they formed this opinion of you prior to meeting you. <laughs> it's like, I'm just trying to exist. I'm literally just, exi I'm literally just existing in the world. <laughs> and it's a fucking problem. And if you're gonna not like me, I would at least like it to be for a legit reason. Yeah, Shannon, that's why her story don't make no sense. People don't just hit you for no reason. Exactly. Seven people in your fucking mm. dorm setup hated you from the first day they saw you. It's not because you discard those reasons that they're not legit. No. Basically, they don't like you because you're annoying as fuck. As someone that is too much, someone that is uh, a know-it-all, someone that's that labeled by a lot of people, basically, it's because you're annoying. Exactly. I'm just trying to live, yes, but you living is taking so much space that you don't like, allow other people to live. Yeah, but it's for them to take their space. See what I mean? Do not consider it. There is the truth, there is my truth. And a lot of times, baby, it's the same. Mm -hmm. And one what? of the reasons why you can see that is because when you, when I recount a story, I want you to notice this when I recount stories. <laughs> I love I love that thing. I think that's that's a classic sign of a narcissist. You see it a lot in Brendan. Whenever he's watching a clip of himself on Instagram, or whatever, he'll start laughing and smiling at the thought of himself. Like, just most people, most normal, well adjusted people cringe at the sound of their own voice. Don't want to sit there with their friends, with their colleagues, and watch a clip of themselves do whatever. It's just embarrassing. We, we don't like it. He will sit there and legitimately smile at the thought of himself and actually maybe even mime along to things that he's saying. And you know, it's Amanda Seals there. She's, she's, she kind of thought of what she's about to say and then smiled at the thought of like look how brilliant i am look how considerate i am look at the things notice what i say and she's smiling at the thought of herself absolutely brilliant narcissistic trait you fucking love it why you can see that is because when you, when i recount a story i want you to notice this when i recount stories i don't i very rarely include my feelings <laughs> it's never i felt that this person did this i thought that this person did this it's like reading Game of Thrones. He's it actually happened. This, I don't want this to be an easy interview. I'm it's like reading Game of Thrones. What, like it's made up? <laughs> what kind of example is that? It's like reading Game of Thrones. Well, like a made up story. Cool, bruv, cool. You need to address whatever. Well, first of all, are, are you still on Insecure? What kind of dumbass question is that? <laughs> <laughs> dumbass By the way, let's go back again. That's an amazing exchange, right? Listen to this, listen to, listen to what she says. Listen to what she says to uh, uh, DJ Envy. He's it's gonna actually give you happened. This, I don't want this to be an easy interview. Uh -huh. I'm ready to address whatever. Well, first of all, are, are you still on Insecure? What kind of dumbass question is that? I'm just <laughs> I want to address whatever. What Are you still on Insecure? What kind of dumbass question is that? <laughs> She's so amazing. She's such a nightmare. Next question. Well, who a, is the person that did not like? No, we're not doing that. But I feel like as <laughs> ask a, the questions. Don't take it easy on me. That's what you want. Amanda's the only factual person in the world. When she tells exactly. a story, her perspective is the perspective. Exactly. Let's that is part going. of my autism. I speak in direct. I speak in linear space. By the way, autism isn't. Her autism is self-diagnosed. That's another thing too that I detest with people online nowadays. Don't give me your mental health status unless it's been diagnosed by a clinical practitioner. I don't care. I don't care. Unless it's been diagnosed officially, 
It doesn't exist. You've made it up. I'm sorry. I got depression. Really? Have you seen anybody for it? Have you checked up on it? Really? Taking any medication? Doing anything for it? No? Okay, cool. I don't care. I've got bipolar. Really? Can you spell bipolar, motherfucker? Okay, cool. Shut the fuck up. He says, I speak in literals. That's part of the reason why people don't like me neither. So when I was at Disney, yes. and I was in the situation at Disney, I was there as the only black girl. Okay. And there was a whole crew. It's like 12 of us, 12 of us. Um, and so I was called an N-word right there while I was there. <laughs> and uh, I was also bullied while I was there because I was told that you're only here because you're black. You can't really dance. You're just here because you're black. So don't get any ideas. I ended up getting kicked out of the conservatory. <laughs> so one of the guys in my class... I love this interview because, in a way, it's a perfect mirror. Shannon Sharp is the consumer professional. He's made a career out of, like, doing the job. Turning up, turning it on, being on time, being a pleasure to work with, knowing what he has to talk about, you know, doing his research. Like, the consumer professional. He's learned how to navigate within the corporate world being a big black man cool amanda seals is the opposite she's trying to use her blackness right as a crowbar as a tr like as a trojan horse to mask all of her shitty personality traits like you shouldn't have any issues with her you shouldn't have any things to call her up upon because she happens to be black because she's a black woman right two of the most rarest you know things in the world that should be put on a fucking pedestal somewhere and people should be crossed armed gawking at it and like throwing flowers all over it that gives her every right to be a cunt to people it's like bro you don't get to be you know un you don't get to be unlikable and then also complain when people don't like you like that's just not how it works like you're allowed to be unlikable if you want be unlikable but having a bit of self-awareness about your unlikability is actually quite good as well that can actually get you quite far but she seems to legitimately think She's the hero of her own story when she's actually the villain. That's the worst part of it. She's the villain of her own story, but she thinks she's the hero. Pretty sad, considering how talented she is. That's a problem as well. She's actually dumbly talented, but can't get out of her own way. Nothing worse than that. Yes. Created a story and he told the teacher a lie. He told her that I was listening to my headphones in class, um, which I was not, but she was already a baddie lady anyway. And again, I'm the only black girl in my class, so like you're just a very easy target. Um, she just lost it, I mean, she lost it. She was like, I can't believe this. So what? in one moment, being black makes you special. And also another moment, being black makes you the victim. Hey, 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 choose one. Being black, what? Is it a superpower or is it the ultimate curse? Which one is it? I can't believe you would be here listening to your headphones. I mean, had you had any run-ins with this teacher prior to this? So, so then she goes on a mission to get me kicked out of the conservatory. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there's no excuse. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. I don't know. But she definitely went... I love Shannon Sharp's face. He's like, bitch, don't you know? You know, man. You know why people don't like you. You know. Don't pretend like you don't know. And I love this interview too because as they've shown with these clips, she's been getting hated on from the moment she stepped into the... Into the... You know, she stepped into public. Into public view. The moment she's around other people, the moment she steps out of her house... The moment she stepped off the porch, as people as people say, right? The moment she hopped off the porch, people hated her. And for some reason, she couldn't figure out in all her years existing that it might be her. She might be the common denominator in all of these things. It just hasn't clicked yet. I love it. Went the distance and she got me kicked out. It had to have hurt to have these black publications. Speak I had a nervous breakdown. It's just the willingness of folks to sell their souls for so little. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I love her so much. I feel like that's what you have to do to like put your gift of being a writer mm -hmm. to work in such a nefarious way. Mm -hmm. I ain't met none of these people. <laughs> I ain't done none of these people. Shout out to college um, when she went to a post academic uh, schooling. Her teacher hated her. One of her <laughs> other classmates decided to tell a random lie about her. All these things for no reason. Uh, black publications wrote bad things about her again unwarranted let's keep listening i'd like to think that they were paid by apac because if sorry not for nothing they were paid by juice i 
think I've gotten in my own way by being more honest than I needed to be in certain situations. This is not conceit or cockiness. This is somebody who has really sat here and looked at this. I think some people don't like me because I'm very light skinned. I think some people don't like me because I'm a woman with a very strong point of view and an opinion. <laughs> Imagine saying people don't like you because you're light skinned. Shouldn't it be the opposite? Shouldn't you have the complex that people love you because you're light skinned? Shouldn't you think people maybe overrate you because you're light skinned? Shouldn't that be how your brain should think? Or shouldn't you just never think that way anyway in the first place? You know, this was insane. She reminds me of that meme. You know, when you go to a job interview and they're like, oh, um, what's the one thing about yourself that you need to improve on? And in your head, you have to fight the urge to not say, oh, I work too hard. Sometimes I don't stop until the job is done. You have to fight the urge not to say that because you know it's so corny. You know it's so cliche. You know it's wrong. But every fiber of your body wants to say it. I'm just too hard working. You know what I mean? But you can't say that. You have to actually look for an actual reason. An actual legit one. And I think you should always have that in mind. Always have one thing in mind that's actually legit. Like for me, it would just be like time. My time management isn't the best. Um, I sometimes don't prioritize things I need to prioritize. I sometimes will take too much on. No, that, that's not good. See, that, that's that's another kind of sucking your own dick. When you say, oh, I just take too much. I just I, I just can't say no. I want to help out the team. I take on all the projects. I'm always willing and able to do anything. Like, that's a bit too much. You have to always have one legit fault of yourself. And if you don't actually have one, you're almost a broken human, to be honest, as well. If you legitimately can't see the error of your own ways, or there aren't things about yourself that, cr that make yourself cringe, like... There's something a bit broken in your brain. We all have that in us. The ability to embarrass and to cringe and to kind of let ourselves down. And you should probably store that in your brain. So when somebody asks you the question, the job interview, you have it to hand and you don't end up sounding like Amanda Seals. I think some people don't like me because I may reflect something that they desire. Listen, the reason why people don't like me is because, you know, I'm wonderful. I'm amazing. <laughs> and people don't like me for that. <laughs> and people don't like me because uh, I'm a total bitch. Which stands for be babe in total control of herself. That's why they don't like me. I think some people don't like me for the reasons that they don't like themselves. What? And I know that there are reasons you don't like me that were handed down to you in some situations. Whoa! By I mean by racism, I mean by classism, <laughs> What? You know, you don't like me because I can talk proper or something. You know, like, if that's a source of ire for you, like, I'm, I'm like, mad. I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure, but even that sentence, is, is that sentence proper? You don't like me because I can talk proper. Does that sound proper to you? I don't know. Somebody put it in you. I've been bullied for being smart. I don't know how being unabashedly smart has become such a villainous thing. I am fucking Scholar <laughs> and Mully. I'm a crusader. Like, <laughs> I'm, a <laughs> I'm a Green Beret. Yo, she's in, a, she's in the 1,000 top comedians out there, bro. To be fair, you know what's funny, actually? When Joe Rogan, all those guys say there's only 1,000 or now it's 250 um, great comedians in the world. I love that they all happen to be English speaking and the majority of them are all men and who happen to be his friends. Isn't that funny? So I wonder if she's actually in that group because Rogan only thinks his friends are the best comedians, only the ones he's seen and only ones he can understand and only the ones that have cocks between their legs. Funny that. Funny, funny, funny that. Saint for difficult women. You didn't get a check for this and you just did this just to do it. I'm just like, damn. That... That's unfortunate for you. Look at, Shannon, look at Shannon. Look at Shannon. Look at that. Usually, right? Usually in social settings, when you're talking to somebody and they have the face that Shannon Sharp currently has on the screen, where he's like looking almost stone face, slumped on the couch. He's got the face of exasperation, tiredness, and just just lost. Usually that's a sign that you're choking that you're chatting shit. Most people are like, oh shit, oh, I'm losing the person. You're losing them. They've got that glazed over look on their face. And usually you switch it up or you try and get them back engaged. Or you basically ask a question, hey, that's anything wrong? A normal person, that's what you That's what you do. Amanda Seals is just going. She's just going. No, I, no idea on like social cues. Can't read people and shit. No self-awareness. No spatial awareness. No emotional IQ. No emotional EQ. Nada just goes reminds me of one papa with people forming opinions is not based on truth Shin, i got in trouble for saying uninsecure you need we need to talk about the incident that you had 
I guess when you're in corporate, you got to keep it corporate, man. We say exactly. nigga on the show. We say nigga all day on this motherfucking show. And it was a black woman who pulled me to the side. And this brother... Oh, hold on. You know what? Listen to this story, right? Listen to this story. Amanda Seals had an issue on set at Insecure. One of the many issues she had that eventually led to her not being, you know, back on Insecure, where she got into an altercation with a staff member because she called the guy a nigger. And I guess her justification for it is that they use that word on the show. The guy that was working is like, hey, we're not on the show now. We're like off, you know, we're not filming now. We're on set, you know, whatever. Not filming. You, you shouldn't say that. And Amanda Seals can't f work out in her brain why there are some things that you just can't say at work. Even if you might say them whilst you're like working. Technically, she can't work out in her head. And the funny thing about this is that this issue is a bit of a minor one. It was kind of blowing out of proportion. Don't get me wrong. But she didn't even fathom in her brain just to say sorry and kind of get it over and done with. She still can't figure out why what she did was wrong and why it would have looked bad and why she's reprimanded. Like, she can't figure it out. This woman's fucking amazing. I was like, damn, you're the only revolutionary nigga around here. He was like, I'm not a nigga. And I said, okay, I get it. Um, hmm, this was the incident. So she's like, we need to talk about the incident. And I said, well... So, uh, and again, another trait of people that are like, super toxic. She's minimizing somebody else being upset about what you said. Dismissing it. Oh, the incident. Bruh, they, they're employing you to do a job. They have some rules about the job. One of the rules you broke. Be apologetic. Promise you won't do it again and keep it moving. It really isn't that deep. But what you can't do is try and minimize, diminish, and just pure out, you know, dismiss what they're saying when they're the ones employing you, when they're the ones in charge, when they're the ones whose feelings were hurt. Just apologize and move on. But she cannot do that. She cannot do it. What incident? What incident? Well, when you just referred to him as... I'm pretty sure that in Django and Chain, uh in the movie Django Unchained, Lil Arnold DiCaprio was not saying that word when they were just chilling. We say it on the movie. No, no, no. The movie said it's one thing. Yeah, just because in your lines it says, don't mean you just be out here in the random trailer be like, hey, bitch, bitch. Oh, 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 that in the script, I'm saying do it for work. Exactly. And then cut, yo, bitch, are we going to lunch? Not kind of, it's not going to work. Exactly. exactly. So I actually re I referred to him as a revolutionary nigga. It was a compliment. Right. You're going to need to apologize to him. Imagine somebody called her a revolutionary bitch. What, what do you think she'd say? If somebody said, hey, Amanda Seals, my revolutionary bitch. What, what would she say? How do you think she'd react if someone said that to her? Yo, Amanda Seals, my revolutionary bitch sister nigga. What, what do you think she would say to that? <laughs> but this is the action of like, I need to... You need to bow down. People are always trying to get me to like apologize for some shit I didn't do wrong right. because they because they feel like I'm too haughty. That's a very toxic trait, isn't it? To feel like people are pulling you up on your mistakes as a way to make you kiss their feet is such a toxic and mad way to look at interactions, right? Like to you to think that every time somebody has an issue with you, they're almost trying to like, put you beneath their feet they're trying to take you down a notch it's like bruh no my feelings are hurt you did something wrong i'm telling you, you did something wrong like like a regular adult like a regular human being apologize we move on in her head she sees it as like a you it's like, it's confrontational it's the, like it's just a weird way to to come to like compartmentalize or to process somebody having an issue with what you said and did like, it's amazing. I love this woman so much in a completely unironic way. They feel like I'm too sure of myself. They feel like I need to be cut down to size. No, they thought it was wrong. Nigga. <laughs> cut down to size. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if this is like the, as much as I love Dash Snow, sorry, Dash Snow, as much as RIP Dash Snow, by the way, as, love, as much as I love Dame Dash, I wonder if this is the consequence of that legendary Dame Dash interview with um, The Breakfast Club. Do you remember, that was just before the pandemic, I think, right? Where he was like, oh, I don't have a boss. Um, I'm not gonna look at another man and call him boss. All this sort of nonsense, right? It was at the start of all that kind of like CEO, boss, 
um, you know, money management, finance, gods, all that sort of nonsense online, right? That became like a movement. And I wonder if there are some people out there that took that stuff way too literally and now have this idea in their heads that they're like mini CEOs, even though they work a job. They're like creative directors. No, I'm a I'm a chief. I'm a direct, like they have this weird thing, this weird like ways that they look at themselves when they're working a regular job. So they so whenever somebody tells them off, it reminds them that they're working a regular job and they have to kind of fight against it, be like, nah, I'm a boss, I'm a boss. Like, bro, relax. You're not a boss. That is your boss. If your boss says you did something wrong, you did something wrong. Apologize. And if you didn't do the thing wrong, just apologize anyway. And then come back later and say, hey, just want to let you know I, I apologize, but also want just give them whatever. But in that moment, apologize so you can keep your job and if it could be fucking smooth. It's not that fucking deep. Not everybody's meant to be a CEO. Not everyone's meant to be a fucking founder. Not everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur. That whole stuff is nonsense. You need people to do the fucking medial jobs, to do the regular shit. You need people, you you need number twos. You need the first 10 employees. You need these people. Having a, <laughs> having a job doesn't mean you're subservient. Doesn't mean you're a slave. Doesn't mean you're less than. It means you're a fucking grown up taking responsibility of your life and trying to support yourself and your family. It's not a fucking bad thing. It really isn't. And sometimes you might do things to people that you don't even know you did wrong. It's perfectly okay. But if that person says you did something that made them upset and you as a as a as a colleague, as a fucking coworker, do them the favor and just acknowledge that and say sorry. It's not that deep. It really isn't. Listen, I use the word mm -hmm. occasionally. I don't use it that often. You'd actually be surprised. Okay, we just you should just use it here. Even <laughs> here, like, a video. I, I might not say it for once every like three videos. Press X Maybe out. When we first started, we used to say it more. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, we barely say it. Yeah, because you know flags. Not even that. I just as I got older, I just used the word less. Mm. That's honestly what it is. Wait, I swear less. I do most of those things less. Sure. But moving past that, Concur. even when I did use it, there were people who were uncomfortable with the word. Mm. And if I, I would not just go to people I don't know that well and be like, hey, nigga, give me that shit. Because they might take it the wrong way. And I would understand why. For you to be told by somebody, yo, don't call me that for what? And it's fair too, because they might have a relationship with that word that's really negative. I know some people, when they hear that word, it mm. triggers some shit in them. And that's okay. For you to be told, yo, you need to apologize for that. You'd be like, oh, they're just trying to put me down. They're just trying to make me bow down. No, man. You're on the job. You're using language that's incredibly inappropriate backstage exactly. to talk to people exactly. who you haven't even established a exactly. rapport with to use that word. I might be calling some of my homegirls the B word. Don't mean I'm going to go to a random girl on the job and just say that shit and think it's supposed to fly. And then if she gets offended, I don't have to apologize. Let's be honest about that word. It is incredibly controversial. We all agree on that. Anyone who says otherwise is lying to themselves. So if you know it, using it at work and then being reprimanded for it should be one of the least surprising things. But if someone tells me, yo, don't call, I'm not that. First thing I'm going to do is, well, shit, my, sorry, yeah. my bad. I'm not going to be like, you trying to, are you trying to put me in these shackles? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. But let's just keep watching, bro. The unfortunate part of that is that it's not a reflection of me, it's a reflection of them. Right. <laughs> Because what is it about me that Shows makes you feel small? Shows and you want me though. to get down to your level? Why do you feel small? It's so patronizing. Anyway, to end this, to end this is this. I don't think there's anything wrong with being unlikable. I honestly do think nowadays, with the way content generation works, with the way social media works, I think it's a superpower to know what people don't like about you. For me, for instance, I realize over the time that I've been doing content, mostly, you know, as consistently I've been doing over the last couple of years and so, I've noticed people have said again and again and again how much they dislike when I repeat stories, how much they dislike when I repeat things that I say, how much they dislike when I repeat things that I say, how much they dislike when I repeat things that I say. Now, I understand why people don't like that, but am I going to change that about myself? No. Do I understand their you know, their grievance and why that would make them annoyed and why that make them frustrated and why it make them make, might they make them X off my content on my streams. Pod I get it completely. But not being aware of it and trying to pretend like it doesn't exist or acting as if they have a problem and you don't have a problem or as if it's a figment of their imagination is utterly bizarre. 
But more so in her case, because her annoyance isn't just a thing that she does. It's her entire personality, her brand. And I feel like Amanda Seals is missing out on so much money, on so much exposure, on so much greatness, because she hasn't tapped into people just dislike her as a person. And I think a good example is like the the fucking Paul brothers, Logan Paul and Jake Paul. They weaponized and kind of embraced how much they were disliked to their betterment, right? In, the, in, in order to like be successful in whatever field they're doing for the boxing to wrestling to the prime, which is going a bit shaky now. But regardless, they really did a good job in, trying, in basically embracing what people don't like about them, not changing it, but also not, not being aware of it. I think that's a superpower. To, to acknowledge, okay, to people don't like me for this and that. I understand this, but I'm going to lean into it because what it does is that the people that don't like you are not going to stop watching you now because they hate watch you. And the people that like you are going to still like you because they like you for who you are. So you might as well just get two for one. You might as well lean into the people that like about you and then also kind of service your fans. But for some reason, Amanda Seals is stuck in the middle where she's almost trying to convince both sides that she's an amazing person when it's like, bruh, the people that don't like you are never going to like you, regardless of what you say and do anyway. So you might as well just embrace it, lean into it, and kind of use it to your flipping advantage. But when you're a professional victim, when all you see are heroes and villains, and you're some, you're always a villain, you're always, sorry, the hero in every story, but you have a track record of falling out with everybody. Because that's the thing that's really wild about Amanda Seals. She has a track record in her professional career falling out with absolutely everybody. And to me, it's a really good reminder as to that balance you need to have. Maybe some people would think, oh, Shannon Sharp is too much of a coon, <clears throat> too much of a corporate shill, right? Whatever. But there's a balance to be had because maybe you don't want to be all the way on the Shannon Sharp, Stephen A. Sm Stephen A. Smith side of things when it comes to dealing with corporations or whatever it may be. Maybe you want to be, maybe, but then you also don't want to be on the Amanda Seals, yay, and Kanye West type of thing, right? You, you want to be somewhere in the middle. And I feel like being aware of that is really important because nowadays, especially with the way, you know, corporate corporations work and shit, I just think a lot of it comes down to being liked. Like I honestly do. And it's an unfortunate thing. I think you realize that the more you kind of, you know, the more you grow up, uh, the more experience you have in different jobs, you realize that sometimes or most of the time, it's almost like the same thing when people say when they say, oh, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. That's the unfortunate reality of life. I'm thinking now another unfortunate reality of life. Sometimes it really isn't about how good you are at the job. It's about whether or not you're liked. It really is. If you can do a mediocre job at work, but you're well liked and you're always a pleasure to deal with. No, you're well liked and you're always on time. Those two things. People will put up with, with the fact that you put in shitty mediocre work. They'll put up with the fact that you're positive around the office. You're on time for the most part, even though your work is fucking shitty. But if you have a stinky attitude, but you have great work, people will really would prefer not to you to be around. That's the reality of the situation. Um, that's why some workplaces that you go to, I've been in this situation to myself where I kind of fucked myself, where I didn't really integrate myself with the, with the, with my teammates or my coworkers. I never went out to the drinks. I never attended the little birthday things where they go and have a cake or something. Like, I didn't partake in anything. Do you know what I mean? And it was no surprise that those are also the jobs I had the worst time at. And I ended, ended up having to get my marching orders or I left myself because I didn't feel comfortable. But a lot of it has to do with just lowering your guard a little bit and just playing the game. It really isn't that difficult. You don't even have to do much. Even if you don't drink or anything, like just attend a little thing, chill out for an hour and then just do the old French exit. I'm going to the bathroom and then just bounce. But if you just don't go, if you don't engage, if you don't participate in anything that your work colleagues get up to, it's not going to be a surprise when they kind of ice you out of anything and they kind of make you feel left out. They kind of make you feel less than. It's not that surprising. You know, humans are, you know, we, we are what we are in it. We're social creatures. And if that social element is missing, if that lack, if that likability element is missing, you're not going to be invited to anything. You know what I mean? You're not going to be felt met, made to feel welcome. And I feel like, She's really doing herself a disservice again, like I said, because she's actually quite talented. She's actually got a range of skills. She's actually got a lot to give. But people don't want to work with her because she's such a nightmare to deal with, which is something that I've heard a lot in Hollywood. People always say that in Hollywood or in the entertainment industry in general, if you don't hear about somebody, if you're like, oh, where did this so-and-so person go? Most of the reason why they're not around is, number one, because they're not getting booked. And number two, because they're probably a pain in the ass to deal with. 
and no one wants to deal with them and they're not getting booked. Those are usually the two main things. It's very rare that somebody just takes a voluntary time away from the industry. It's mostly, you know, it's kind of brought upon you because no one kind of wants to deal with you. So um, I really wish she would kind of figure it out. She's not ever going to figure it out because, you know, that's the way she kind of is. It kind of is what it is. And I guess we have to move on with that one. I guess we have to move on with that one.